In this quick start Photoshop tutorial we're going to demonstrate the use of the ColorLogic Image Effects plugin with inside Adobe Photoshop CC. Uh, the same theory also applies for CS versions and we're going to just give you some basic understanding about how the plugin works and how to convert your images. If you'd like to know more in-depth tutorials we do have many more videos that will show you how to do things like your metallic gradations, setting text and some tips and tricks for our special effects but for this purpose it's just really to show you how the plugins work. So let's just take um, an image, let's take this one of this uh, wine glass with some liquid in it. We're going to convert this into metallic. As a designer I'm going to choose how I want the metallic to be but the plugin doesn't know what you're thinking so it can only see colour. It can only calculate the effect based on colour values of pixels. So I'm going to open up the ColorLogic plugin. That is accessed from the window menu extensions ColorLogic and it's one button, really quite simple, it doesn't matter if it's RGB, LAB, CMYK I'm going to do this one in RGB because I want to show you something first of all but then I'll show you some CMYK conversions so I'm going to click the button, it's so I'm going to go through, calculate the separation and give me my colour logic separation based on the pixels within inside that image you need to look for an image that's what we would class as mid-tone ranged the, that's because the darker image, the more ink saturation there is and therefore the less the silver can show through or the metallic effect and also the light highlights like this, these are non-metallic so this is not going to come out in metallic because there's no colour there so based on that theory it gives us a separation such as this now from there we're then going to then edit that further now first of all I just want to show you what happens if you have an RGB image and a spot colour. So RGB is an additive colour system. A spot colour is a subtractive colour system and therefore you cannot see both additive and subtractive at the same time in Photoshop so it kind of comes out looking a little bit wrong. And that's nothing to do with colour logic, it's just the way that Adobe works. So you're not going to see it correctly with colour on the screen based on an RGB image. But you can if you want, I'm going to convert this to CMYK so you can see it better on the screen okay so first of all we're going to choose we want the metallic in this instance as a designer I want all this liquidy effect to be metallic and I don't want any of that background in metallic at all so I need to make a mask and this is the one thing that we cannot do for you we cannot calculate and do that masking for you because every single image is different and because it cannot see metallic content there's no parameter to say make this metallic but not that okay so from a design perspective I'm going to go in and make some masks and I'm just going to do this by using do it quite crudely for the purpose of, of this online video now everything we're doing here is in real time there's no tricks involved we're just picking images from databases that we hold uh, stock library files or anything along those lines and we're just going to show you how quickly and how easily these files are actually converted so once you've got your mask and you're happy with what you've done, something like that, I'm going to make a feather selection. So I'm feathering my selection by a couple of pixels. It all depends on how big your image is. Obviously if you've got a two meter high image, a couple of pixels won't be enough, but obviously use your judgment just to give a soft edge to your masking so you don't have that hard definitive edge. So I'm going to go on to my metallic channel and I'm going to delete it to white. So it's now going to delete all of that area that I've got selected now I can get rid of our selection so that gives us a starting point now the image plugin is designed to calculate the value of the metallic for the, each pixels in the image but you can push it a little bit further what we would always recommend is open up your curves or your levels I'm going to use my curves here and although this image looks quite deep and moody you can actually make it a little bit more metallic and you can see that here by this break, this difference between the shadow point and where the maximum amount of data um, is on the image. And if we move this across, you'll see what happens. Notice the image going darker. Okay, it's actually pushing more metallic effect into it. So if I wanted to, I could literally flood it all with metallic inside that separation. But really, I'm just interested in pulling it up to this starting point here where the, the amount of data starts to become the maximum, so 100% mark. Now from there I can tweak it a little bit further. I'm going to use my, um, what tool is this one? It's the dodge tool. Now dodge the highlights and set your preferences for whatever your exposure, but yeah, about 30% will be fine for this image. I'm just going to go through and start 
adding a little bit extra contrast in here so that not everything is completely metallic all the time just making my image separation that little bit nicer and it, again it's a selective thing it's down to the designer to choose to do this themselves from here I've now got all that image and that's metallic now notice that's the original four color and that's it with a metallic below it silver separation is equivalent to about 30 percent black as a color value so when you print on top of silver ink or silver substrate it's like printing on top of 30 percent black so you've got to take that into account when you print on top of with color because 30 percent black on top of this color is going to make it look dirtier and darker so what i'm going to do is show you a tip and a trick and how you can get around this by boosting the color saturation so all i'm going to do is with the metallic separation selected now notice when I put my cursor over the little thumbnail it changes into this little hand. Now if I hold down my command key it changes into a bounding box. It's basically a selection tool and on a PC it would be the control key. So I hold down my command key and I click the thumbnail and it will pick up all the pixels on that separation. But only the pixels in that separation. Now I'm just going to hide the pixels so you can't see them all buzzing around on the screen it just makes it easier so you can see what I'm about to do next but they are still there just bring them back so you can see so I'm going to go on to my CMYK separation I'm going to go to the image menu adjustments brightness and contrast and I'm going to change the brightness to about 30 percent so it's just lightening all the pixels from that selected area wherever the metallic is going to print and therefore it's going to basically pull some of the color from the CMYK to be compensated by that silver, some of that greyness. What we can also do is add in a little bit of extra colour just to compensate for that greyness. So I'm going to go to adjustments, hue and saturation, and just increase the saturation fractionally. Obviously if you go way high you'll see it's really changing the image. Just a little bit extra in those pixel areas. And I click on OK. So we've made a mask we've run it through the plugin, we've enhanced the separation, we've compensated some of the CMYK to be, you know, for this silver that's going in here, and we've added in a little bit of extra colour. So now we have a fighting chance of an image that's going to come out looking pretty nice. Now people have said to us, well, can't you just build all this factor in about your images and putting in the extra colour and the brightness and everything else? And yes, we could, but the problem is you don't want to do that for every image. Every image is different, every image can be handled different, for example, I might want metallic in the background, another designer might want metallic in the foreground. It's a subjective tool. So there's nothing we can do to really do the whole solution for you, because it's really down to the designers and what you want to achieve. So by using these tips and tricks, you're going to get the best use out of your designs. So from there, I now save that file. Save as. I'm going to do this as a PDF. Save that as a press quality PDF do whatever PDF settings you want really. Uh, I'm going to save that file and then we'll take that file into the FX viewer to see the effects of what's been created. Now again this is just to show you how to convert images. If you want to learn how to do any of the other tips and tricks, you know for example the watermarks, the dimensional effect etc or making text and everything in Photoshop then you'd need to watch the individual tutorial videos. Okay so let's take a look at that PDF file that we've created. We'll drag that into the FX viewer the FX Viewer program will then open up and it will then render that file for us. Okay, so with the file rendered, we're going to view that. We can either view that as it is in metallic. I'm going to view that as a foil so you can see that extra pop. So now you can see how we've taken that one simple design, added in the metallic effects done the masking, done a little bit of retouching and now we made that look like liquid gold.